I need your help. See, I've been trying to write this really cool adventure story, but I can't quite get the details. I know there's a story waiting there to be told, but do you think you could help me? Will he write about a monster slaying hero or a forest elf plotting with evil magic? It's up to you. It's your story. So take out your pen and the story will unfold. Are you ready? Is this story about a hero or a villain? If the story is about a hero, go to this minute mark in the video. If the story is about a villain, go to this minute mark in the video. Hero, villain. So, you have decided to write about a hero. Hmm. Is this hero human or something else? Is it a dwarf or an elf or even an alien come down to earth? Take out your pen and answer these questions. Feel free to pause this video if you need more time to write. Number one, name three good characteristics about this character. Are they kind or generous, for example? And name three bad characteristics about this character. Are they selfish sometimes or a little egotistical? Number two, what is their hobby? Number three, what is their favorite food? Number four, do they have any family members? And what is their age? Number five, what are they wearing? And number six, what is their name? It's always good to think about more details than you might write about in a story when you think about your character. This way you have more of a full picture of who your character is and how they would react in certain situations. So thinking about characteristics or their hobby, even if you don't necessarily write about this, helps you envision your character when you are writing your story. So once you have finished writing all these answers, go ahead and go to this minute mark on the video. So you have decided to write about a villain. Hmm. Is this villain a human or something else? Maybe a dwarf or an elf or even an alien come down from Earth. Now take out your pen and answer these questions. Feel free to pause this video if you need more time to write. Number one, name three bad characteristics about this villain. Are they maybe selfish or maybe they are a bit rude or unkind? Num and name three good characteristics about this villain. Maybe they're funny or intelligent. Number two, what is their age and who are their family members? Number three, what are they wearing? Number four, do they have a sidekick? Number five, why are they a villain? Maybe they have some sort of backstory. And number six, what is their name? It's always a good idea to write more about your characters than you might write about in the story. So thinking about bad and good characteristics about their family or even the clothes that they are wearing will help you picture your character as they move in the story. So even if you don't write about these things in the story, it always helps. To, um, to have a better idea of what this character is in the story. So once you have finished writing the answers to these questions, go ahead and go to this minute mark on the video. So now that you know who you're writing about, where will your character set off to? While walking along a path you come to a crossroad. You can enter two ways. To the left is the, is the shore. To the right is the forest. To the left, you hear the waves 
crashing in the distance and the cause of the birds. To the right is the forest. You can't see much beyond the trees, but in the distance, there is a faint sound of flutes. Do you decide to go to the left, to the sea, or the right, to the forest? You choose. If you decide to go to the left, go to this minute mark on the video. If you decide to go to the right, go to this minute mark on the video. You've decided to go left towards the sea. Soon the path ends and you're just walking along the shore on the sand. Now let's go ahead and create a setting using our senses. Pause this video and answer these questions. Number one, what does it smell like where you are? Number two, what do you hear? Number three, what do you physically feel? The sand, the wind, the water? Describe this. Number four, what does the air at the beach taste like? And number five, describe what you see. Have you written everything down? If you haven't, feel free to pause this video. It's always better to show us a setting rather than telling us what we see. So by thinking about our senses, we're able to paint a picture using our words. So now that we have the character and the setting, let's get on with the story. As you continue to walk along the beach, you see a gathering of birds out in the distance. So you run along to go investigate. And sure enough, the closer you get, the more and more you begin to see a ship docked. And next to it is the large gathering of birds. So you run up to the birds and scare them away. And there in the center of the bird was a young kid laying on the ground. You go up to him and he opens his eyes and coughs. <sighs> water, he says. So you pull out some water and feed it to him. You ask if this is his ship. He says yes. You ask where his crew is as you look around. There doesn't seem to be anyone else there. He says he doesn't know. He was trying to go look for them, um, but he thinks they might be on the ship. So he asks if you will come along and search for them on his ship. You agree. Now, if you have chosen to write about a hero, go to this minute mark on the video. If you have chosen to write about a villain, go to this minute mark on the video. You have chosen to write about a hero. So as you enter this ship in order to help this boy, you find yourself immediately swarmed by a group of people. It turns out this is a trap. You're actually on a pirate ship, and you're swarmed by pirates waiting to fight and imprison you. You can choose either to fight or to escape. So I want you to choose the items you would normally find on a pirate ship and write about how you would use these items to either fight or escape. Pause this video now and write about this. Did you choose to fight or escape? If you chose to fight, go to this minute mark on the video. If you chose to escape, go to this minute mark on the video. Whew. You narrowly escaped, but in the process, you had to leave something important of yours behind. I want you to pause this video and write about what you left behind, the consequences of leaving it behind, how you felt about it, and how you dealt with it moving forward. Once you finish writing this, go to this minute mark on the video. 
You just managed to escape by fighting, but in the process, the ship sank. Go ahead and pause the video and write about how you feel about this. What are the consequences of the ship sinking? And how did you deal with it moving forward? Once you finish writing this, go ahead and go to this minute mark on the video. So as a villain, you decide to go on the ship. Why not? Um, as you get on the ship, the kids ask if you could maybe go in and check some of the rooms while he goes off in another direction. In one of the rooms, you see sitting on a table a beautiful crown. It is full of these clearly elegant jewels that must be worth a lot of money. You check over your shoulder. No one's there. So you decide to go ahead and take the crown and put it in your bag. As you are exiting this room, you see a door to your right, slightly ajar, um, and uh, through the door, you can see that there are these jewels and treasures everywhere in the room. Uh, you're not sure if it'll fit with the crown in your bag, uh, but maybe there's something in there that will also fit that you can take and steal and get off the ship with. But as you're about to enter the room, you hear the, the kid yelling from down, from down the hallway, asking for you to come and uh, go to, to them. So do you decide to enter the room to the right or follow the kid down the hallway? If you decide to go to the room to the right, go to this minute mark on the video. If you decide to follow the kid, the kid's voice down the hallway, go to this minute mark on the video. Ah, so you decided to go into the room with the treasures. Unfortunately, as you walk in the room, a cage comes in from above and drops down, trapping you there. It was a trap all along. A group of pirates come and surround you and qu start to question you. Why are you after the treasure? What did you want? Who are you? Your greed got the best of you. Now the pirates want to keep you imprisoned and use you for labor as they go out on pirate adventures. Pause this video and write about how you feel. What are the consequences of your actions? And how will you deal with this moving forward? Once you have finished writing about this, go to this minute mark on the video. You decide that the crown is enough. You don't have enough room to carry more treasure without being suspicious. So you go ahead and follow the voice of the kid. The kid says that maybe the, that his crew is in the town nearby, but he's not exactly sure how to get there. You know how to get there. So the kid asks if you can go ahead and uh, walk with them to the nearest town. Once you go to town, you separate ways and the kid thanks you for helping them. In your bag is the treasure. You manage to get away. The treasure is worth for quite a lot. Pause the video and write about what the consequences are of stealing this treasure. How do you feel about it? And how will you deal with this moving forward? Once you have finished writing about this, go to this minute mark on the video. Pick out your pen and answer these questions. Number one, what kind of animals do you hear? Do you hear anything else? Number two, can you feel anything around you? Grass, trees, dirt, for example. What does it feel like? Number three, do you smell anything? Number four, what does the air around you taste like? Describe this. And number five, what do you see in the forest? Go ahead and pause this video if you need time to write. Writing about the five senses helps you show the setting rather than just telling us what it is around us. And so by answering these questions, hopefully we can paint a picture using our words of what is in the forest. Once you finish answering these questions, go to this minute mark on the video.
you continue to walk along the forest following the sounds of flute until you come across a pond. In the pond, there is this waterfall. And near the waterfall is a group of fairies. This is the source of the sound. You try to get near, slowly and curiously enthralled by the shiny lights emitting from the fairies. But suddenly you hear a voice behind you. Don't go near them. You turn around and there is an elf leaning against the tree. The elf tells you that the fairies, while beautiful, are extremely dangerous. He continues to explain that the elves and fairies have been in conflict for generations. Whenever the elves settle in the forest, the fairies come soon after and make the fruits from the trees rotten. Uh, the, the fruits are the elves' main source of food. And so this is very troubling for the elves. And the sound of flutes has become an omen for the elves. The elf looks you up and down and asks, hey, maybe you can help. Maybe you can get rid of these fairies for us. If you are a hero, go to this minute mark on the video. If you are a villain, go to this minute mark on the video. As a hero, you decide that you need to investigate. You can't just get rid of a whole species just because someone asks you to. So you learn that the fairies are in fact not evil, that they are just another type of species like birds or, or monkeys trying to live their lives in the forest. The fairies come to the elves because Whenever the elves pick the fruits from the trees, the trees omit this order that the fairies like. And when the fairies come to the trees, they cause the they cause a sap to grow on the trees that ends up causing the fruits to go rot. Pause this video and write about how you would help both parties, the both the fairies and the elves. Is there a way to get both fruit and to control the amount of sap that the trees uh, omit so that the fruit doesn't go rotten. Once you write this down, go ahead and go to this minute mark on the video. So you have managed to restore the relationship between both the fairies and the elves. But unfortunately, as a result, they both have to compromise. What was this compromise? How do you feel about this compromise? Are there any consequences to this compromise? And how do you deal with this compromise moving forward? Pause this video and write about it. Once you have finished writing, go to this minute mark on the video. So as a villain, you're not exactly sure you want to help the elves. In fact, you actually know that the fairies are not evil. They're just creatures trying to live their everyday life, such as monkeys or birds or turtles. But the elves have promised you to give you their most valuable heirloom. You're not exactly sure what this heirloom is, but elves have been known to live long lives and have many valuable treasures. But you actually know that the reason the trees um, are giving these rotten fruits is because the fairies create an, a, a large amount of sap on the trees. And do you know that the sap is, has magical healing properties? You think this might be valuable. You might be able to sell this in the towns nearby. So do you decide to help the elves get rid of the fairies for the valuable heirloom? Or do you decide to try to get rid of the elves and keep the sap for your own profit? If you decide to help the elves, go to this minute mark on the video. If you decide to help the fairies, go to this minute mark on the video. So you decide to help the elves get rid of the fairies. How do you get rid of the fairies? What negative effect do you think this would have on the environment? Pause this video and answer these questions. How do you get rid of the fairies? What negative effect do you think this will have on the environment?
Once you finish writing this, go ahead and go to this minute mark on the video. So you decide to get rid of the elves. Pause this video and answer these questions. How do you get rid of the elves? Number two, what do you do with the sap? And number three, are there any negative effects to the environment? Once you have finished answering your questions, go to this minute mark on the video. Ah, dear villain, you have managed to get rid of the fairies. Unfortunately, the heirloom that you got from the elves is this wooden talisman. While very beautiful, it's pretty much worthless. Pause this video and write about how you feel. Are there any negative consequences? And how will you deal with this moving forward? Once you have written everything down, go to this minute mark on the video. So you thought that it would be better to sell the sap than to help the elves. Unfortunately, it turns out that the sap does have magical healing properties for minor cuts, and it only works in the forest. So once you sell the first batch of sap, to people in the town nearby, uh, people start coming to you complaining that the sap doesn't help. And everyone just thinks that it's a hoax and rumors spread that you are essentially a liar. <laughs> Pause this video and write about how you feel. Are there any consequences? How will you deal with this moving forward? Once you have finished writing, go to this minute mark on the video. Congratulations, you made it to the end. And wow, what a story you wrote. Thank you so, so much for your help. And for watching this video, if you'd like to try again, go ahead and go back to the start. Bye now.